Welcome back, everybody, to another Watchtower Database exclusive interview. We have a very uh, shway guest with us today, I had to say it. Uh, the voice of Batman, Terry McGinnis himself, Will Friedel. Thank you so much for being here with us, Will. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, very yeah. much. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll get to a lot of Batman Beyond questions really soon, but first we want to talk about your life, like where you grew up, uh, went to school, and what got you into acting. Okay. Uh, well, I am a Connecticut boy, born and raised. Um... I, uh, there's yeah, cheering in the back in Hartford, somewhere. <laughs> it's like, yes, yes, yeah, somewhere, somewhere there's people in Connecticut. <laughs> we're proud, we're proud of being in Connecticut. <laughs> um, and, uh, I started, I was, was, as they say, bitten by the acting bug as early as I can remember. Uh, you know, I was, we used to have free day back in first grade and it was, I think it was a Friday and every free day I would put on a play. <laughs> um, for my classroom. It was my favorite thing in the world. It was usually Stone Soup. I don't know if you remember that play. <laughs> yeah, um, I know of it. Yeah. <laughs> just because it was easy to do. And uh, yeah, then I, I you know, went from there. I, I moved schools after that to a, uh, a slightly bigger school where they had a drama department. And my drama teacher uh, said, you know, you're, you seem to really like this and you're seem to be good at it so there's a an opening for a an, a an open cattle call at the Hartford stage which is a, a very reputable stage in Connecticut and uh I went in and I read for the the smallest part in the play that had I would had one line and right before the play went on they switched me with the lead kid oh. and the funny part about that funny part about that story is the play starred some incredible actors, David Strathairn and um, Jerry Bammon and Mary McDonald, who was oh, at wow. Seattle Comic-Con where yeah. I saw you guys. And it's, I took nice. a picture with her. It's the first time that we'd spoken in over 30 years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was cool to see her. I, I pulled up the picture. I said, look, that was me at 10 and that's you. And she'd say, oh, my God, give me a big hug. She pretended to remember me. It was very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> sure. um, and she did. It was in, she's in the photo op booth looking at people going, oh, he was so wonderful. And I just wanted to go, oh, that's so sweet. You have no idea who I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, we, it was great. And then after that, I, uh, you know, uh, both my parents are, are professionals. My mom was a lawyer for many, many years. My father's a lawyer for years. And he was also a captain in the Navy. We had nothing to do with the industry. Um, you hear stories about kids being forced into the business. I was just the opposite. I had to beg my parents to let me do something. And my dad came home with a whole bunch of uh, yellow pages from New York City. And I had, you know, my first headshot taken in the back of his office. And we kind of laughed as we did it. And my dad went, OK, we'll send it out to some people in the newspaper, or to the yellow pages, which for all you kids listening was how people used to get their <laughs> phone numbers. And uh, and we figured nothing would happen with it. And six months later, I was already on my first series on Nickelodeon. So it was uh, it wow. was a crazy <laughs> Crazy business. Uh, and I was a Nickelodeon kid for, gosh, from I was 11 when I got my first Nickelodeon gig, 11 or 12. And I did that from 12 to, or 11 to 15. And then when I was 16, I got a show called Boy Meets World and moved out to Los Angeles. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Can you uh, describe what that's about for us? <laughs> <laughs> Boy Meets World is. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we don't have enough time, it Will. Was the... <laughs> <laughs> It was it's easy. It's the show that people change the channel. It was between uh, Urkel and Sabrina. That's oh. how I say it. There you go. Nice. <laughs> That's great. And then I ended up out here and, and, and in this wonderful business show, and I've been stuck in it for 31 years now. Mo starting to move into, uh, into the more Batman-oriented questions. Uh, was mm -hmm. Terry McGinnis your first voiceover work? First ever voiceover job was oh. Batman, yeah. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> what a what a way to break in. <laughs> oh, and I'm telling you, was I always tell people. I mean, I I walked into the room, and I, first of all, I was a huge Batman, I'm a huge animation fan. But yeah. Batman the animated series to me is the the single. It changed the whole ball game for animation. Batman the animated. Right. Series. Agreed. It, oh, it certainly. Uh, it was dark. The acting was real. Nobody was cartoony. It was awesome. So I knew the names of the people involved. So when walking into the, to the audition room and I knew that you got, you know, it was Bruce Tim and Paul Dini was there. Alan Burnett was there. It was directed by Andrea Romano. I mean, it was, yeah. I tell people it was like, it, it would be the equivalent of being an on-camera actor and saying, Oh, you've never done anything before. Well, now you're starring in a Steven Spielberg movie. <laughs> yeah, um, 
so it was awesome. I mean, it was just the, I was incredibly lucky to even get the audition and then to actually be cast was, I still look back and go, how the hell did that happen? Um, it was incredible. Yeah. And I mean, you went through the whole show working with Kevin Conroy all the time, but then on the return of the Joker movie, you even got to work with Mark Hamill. What was that like? I'm sure that was even more ridiculous for you. <laughs> Those. Yeah. Well, for, well, I mean, Kevin Conroy is who will always be my Batman. Yeah. Um, Kevin took me under his wing right away. Just because I'd never. It, it's a, oh, it, people, <laughs> it is, yeah. Good pun. <laughs> Thank you. People, though, people, people think that you kind of, oh, well, you're an actor, so you can obviously do voiceover. And that's just not the case. It yeah. is a completely different beast. And I hadn't done it yet. So Kevin, little things. Wow, sit back, roll back your shoulders, open up your diaphragm. I mean, he really taught me mm -hmm. uh, the ropes when it came to the voiceover world. So that alone was amazing. But then Return of the Joker, um, we recorded that over, it was like a 10 or 12 day period. And for the entire time, I'm in a chair, literally between Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And I kept kind of, looking at the side of my eye at the both of them going, just don't make any noises or they're going to know you don't belong here. Um, it was, it was the, one of the most surreal kind of experiences I've ever had in my life. And watching the two of them, again, being a Batman, the animated series fan, watching the two of them interact with each other was just right. so unbelievable. Um, so that is one thing where when people always tell me like, Oh, boy, meets world. What's, what's the best thing you've ever done in your career? And I, I, I you know, I hesitate to say it was boy meets world because it Batman beyond gave me so many incredible experiences that, uh, it was magical. I mean, I, plus whenever you can tell a woman that you're Batman and not be lying, it's pretty great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so you got to fight. The I tell I got my wife. Movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> So um, you fought the Joker in that, of course. Were there any other classic Batman villains that you wish you could have faced as Terry McGinnis? You know, that was one of the things that that Bruce, Tim, and uh, and all the guys over there really kind of wanted to do. I remember from the beginning because it was, you know, I'm still, I'm, I think mm -hmm. I'm 20, 21, 22 when we started the show. Uh, and again, being a huge fan, I would go in and go, when do we meet, the, you know, when do we meet the... Uh, uh, Bane, which we finally got to do, or or what you know, when do we meet Scarecrow? When, and he and he said, you know, we don't want to do that. He said, what we're not going to do is just rehash all the old characters. Yeah. And uh, you, you feel like, oh, maybe I'll, you'll be a little bummed, but then out comes Ink, and out comes Shriek, and out mm -hmm. comes all of these incredible new. I keep saying incredible because it's such a wonderful uh, 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 word when it comes to this show. But <laughs> sure. Uh, the, the, the 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 villains they created the whole new rogues gallery they came up with was so different and so edgy and worked in that world of that that was the thing that was so great about the villains of Batman the animated series that they worked in that Gotham and yeah. it was the same thing with uh, with Beyond was the villains were they worked in that Gotham in that kind of new age Gotham had some great characters. And when you then take characters like, which to me is one of my favorite scenes of, of the entire series. And I know Bruce had wanted to do it for a long time where Terry's fighting Shriek and his hearing goes out. So the entire scene is done without any sound. Right. Yeah. Um, that things like that were, you know, I think wholly original to Batman beyond and really set the tone for everything. So there's times where, you know, when Bruce said, Hey, Terry's going to join the Justice League and you're going to get to work with Superman. Awesome. When, hey, we're bringing Bane back. We're bringing the Joker back. And occasionally they'd throw in one of Mr. Freeze. They'd throw in somebody really cool. Yeah. And it was just super exciting for me as a fan to be there. But it was equally exciting every week when the scripts were mailed because they weren't emailed at the time. So they would literally show up at your door. Right. Um, and you'd open the script and go oh my god it's, she's ink she becomes a liquid oh the animation is gonna be <laughs> and you're just yeah you're in heaven so it was uh it was every week was something great well along that same line with the with the villain appearances or or lack thereof um we got you know 
Robin, Batgirl, the like grown up versions of them, and of course Bruce Wayne throughout the whole show. Um, but one of the like Bat Family characters that we never actually never showed up was Dick Grayson, Nightwing. Did you ever um, have any uh, like thoughts in your head of of where Nightwing might be during that time, or or was it ever really brought up uh, as a possibility of being on the show? No, well he's mentioned once. Yeah, uh, he's mentioned. I think Barbara Gordon mentions him and just says Dick has Dick moved out of Gotham and established right. himself in another city. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have since I've since played Dick uh, yeah. and mm-hmm. Nightwing for a whole bunch of different times. So I just assumed they knew in the future I was going to play him too. So they didn't want to cross the water. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe he would have shown up and then you would be voicing him and it would have been too confusing. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd have to, then I'd have to voice, voice both of them and it would have made me look egotistical. So, um, no, I think they were, they, they were pretty good with, with again, taking kind of the, whatever stories you had and then tweaking them just a bit. So it, it was kind of, Bruce is one of those guys where if you, if you're expecting it to happen, he's going to make sure it doesn't. Right. <laughs> um, and he's okay. going to do it. He's going to do that in a great way. He's going to do it in a way that you. He, he doesn't do it from a place of oh, you're a fan. That's what you want to see. Then I'm not going to give it to you. He's going to do it in a way of oh, you're a fan and you think this is what you're going to want to see. Well, check this out, right. and it's even better mm-hmm. than you. Expect. Yeah, that's true. Terry grabs Nightwing's mask. That's almost a good kind of substitute. In that sense. That, right when he was the, the bat suit was was on the front, right. I think. It's all yeah, glitching yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That well, that was a conversation with my comic book friends that I would have all the time because I had the friends that would go, "Oh, dude, you're Batman. That's the greatest. Oh my god!" And then there'd be dead silence, and one of them would go, "You know, it's just the suit, right?" And I go, "Okay, wait a second. And we'd have a whole conversation. <laughs> so thankfully, they do the episode where where he doesn't have the suit. Yeah. He's got to go prove himself to to really be Batman. I was so happy they did yeah. that because. I had that from friends all the time. It's just a suit. He's got a powerful suit. Like, okay. <laughs> well, Mark Hamill recently posted on Twitter that he recorded lines for a Batman the Animated Series Sega video game um, and only saw the final animation recently, like years later. Um, is there anything you can think of that you recorded for Batman Beyond that didn't actually become a reality? Huh. <laughs> no. Lost no. Lost no. Batman Beyond. I don't know. Yeah. 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 No, I don't think there is. There's certain things that I recorded that I never saw. Like, you know, I remember doing a um, an entire recording session for a Batman Beyond watch oh, where oh, I had to huh. say I had to say every single time. So it was just literally going <laughs> one, <laughs> two, three, four. And then you're getting, you know, five minutes later, you're going four, seventeen. Oh or my God. So, <laughs> I remember that. We have to get that watch. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I don't. I now. never saw the watch. Yeah, this was back in the day when when they would have you record the voice for the toys too. Nowadays they kind of get sound alike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, to do the toys, I was Bumblebee for years, and I don't think I did a single Bumblebee toy. Uh, so <laughs> it you, you you never know. But that was yeah. We I remember that long recording said seven oh eight, seven oh nine. Yeah, that was. Uh, and then it's like, That's you know, great. at the, the bat time will be, you do see, you say stuff like that. Sure. So I, I'm not sure they ever made it, but I, I know that you recorded it. That's funny how you had to, you had to do this, the wristwatch, but they didn't get you for like the kids WB commercials. Those were all just different people. <laughs> yeah, it was, they, you never, it was so strange what they would pick for us to actually do. And then the things we didn't actually do and. Uh, I mean, you just never know. But then there's a lot of things in the in the Batman Beyond world that don't make any sense. Right. Um, <laughs> you know. But I I like to think of it then then they're leaving the door open. Everybody's going. You know, they keep coming up with Arkham Batman games. Why is there not a Beyond game? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, so hopefully in the future there will be one. We 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 don't know what's up. But uh, yeah, I think I think Beyond is more popular now than it's ever been. So hopefully we'll see some new stuff because it was a ton of fun to play. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, so going past just the Batman Beyond show, you also showed up as Terry uh, in a couple of guest appearances in Static Shock, uh, Justice League Unlimited, and the criminally underrated and, and cut-too-soon Zeta Project spinoff. Uh, was it was it a different experience uh, recording for all of those shows? Um, yeah, in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. If memory serves, both Zeta and Static, Andre Romano was still the director. Um, I also, you know, I, I've known Dietrich Bader for years and years and years. So Dietrich was in Zeta. And then, you know, we did uh, Brave and the Bold together. And 
Secret Saturdays together. I mean, the teacher, I, teacher and I had worked together for show after show after show. So you kind of still feel like you're in the same room with people, but you know, you're the guest star now. It's, it's, yeah. um, it's a, a, a completely different vibe. It's, it's how I have to imagine some of the cast members of Boy Meets World felt when they went and did Girl Meets World, where it's kind of <laughs> right. like, okay, wow, this is, we're, this is, this is not our show anymore. We're, we're kind of the Pied Pipers for the next generation. So, um, you know, Static and Zeta, they, they were the, their own things. Um, and it was just kind of coming in and, oh, yeah, that's right. Terry's going to pop in for an episode. So uh, Justice, League, uh, Justice League to me is, is kind of different than, than Static and Zeta. Um, to me, Justice League was more of a continuation of the Batman animated series, Batman Beyond kind of Justice League world. Um, I know, for instance, that the final episodes of the uh, uh, main series of Batman Beyond, The Call, part one and two, where Terry joins the Justice League, I know that Bruce and all the guys over there were using that as a template to um, can we do a show revolving around yeah. six or seven superheroes at a time. Um, so they rolled right into that. That's another one of my favorite shows of all time. So I think that's a phenomenal yeah. show. And the cast on that show was just so unbelievable. Um, so, uh, sure. yeah, I think that was, those were kind of separate things. It was those, when I rolled into those, felt a little more like just the continuation of Beyond. Because I was also... I also did an episode of Justice League as Kyle Rayner and yeah. I, you know, it was the whole same crew and all those kind of guys, um, uh, the men and women over there. But uh, yeah, Zeta, Zeta was fun. Cause again, doing Nathan and Dietrich Bader, like I knew everybody on the show and static the same, but that was those two more felt just kind of like guest starring as opposed to kind of continuing the story. Because of course, you know, Justice League ended with, with ended the entire Beyond series with epilogue, which is one of the coolest episodes we ever did. Um, so that was, uh, that was, that was kind of fun. Staying on, uh, on Justice League for a second. Um, there was the, one of the, one of the episodes that you did come in on, uh, the league had traveled to the future to stop Kronos, uh, who was messing with the time stream. And because of those time shenanigans, some revolutionary war soldiers appeared out of thin air. They see you and they shout fire at will. Was that an inside joke on your name or was that just kind of kind of an extra bonus that that wasn't thought about? Um, well, there's a couple of fun bonus, a couple of fun bonuses there. The guy who yells fire at will is actually me. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. I am, That's awesome. I am actually the British soldier. Uh, but no, I think that was just because that was how, how it was said back in the day. My favorite part of that was and I ta actually talked to Bruce Tim about it was the fact that I love that the big old style musket bullets actually hurt Terry yeah. <laughs> because why, why would a future suit ever think of defending against giant musket bullets? Sure. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool where it was like, okay, you know, laser blast, not a problem. Big old tiny musket bullet. And he's like, what the hell? Ow, what the hell was that? And you die so, pretty shortly <laughs> after that anyway. So I like that. Yeah. But no, go, oh, back, and, go back and listen carefully. I am, I'm, uh, I'm the British soldier. Yeah. Nice. That's an exclusive here. Well, yeah. <laughs> your awesome. your most famous role in the DCAU. Yeah. That, well, that well, that kind of goes to. I mean, the 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 inside joke thing. It goes to. There was an episode of Boy Meets World where, uh, and this was an inside joke because Michael Jacobs, who created Boy Meets World, is it was a huge comic book fan. And there's an episode where Eric is on a date with a girl at the very end of the show. And she says, are there any secrets you want to tell me? And he looks right at her and says, I'm Batman. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice. Was that girl so the that president's was... daughter? <laughs> yes, exactly. <yeah. laughs> but that was, that, was inside, that was the tip of the hat to Batman Beyond was Eric being able to say I'm Batman. So I thought that was cool. That's sweet. <laughs> well, in that same Justice League Unlimited episode, Kevin Conroy plays both the present day Batman and old Bruce Wayne. What was it like yeah. watching him switch between those personalities? Like probably like how it would be if you uh, were Terry and Nightwing, I assume. <laughs> it was, it, you know, you're watching, you're watching a classically trained actor. So Kevin can just do everything, but it was, uh, it was great. It was cause he, you know, read all the lines, you know, one after another. So he's, He's, he's playing off himself um, right. and to then come in, come into the middle and, and kind of, I think he says, uh, you know, Batman, Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne, Batman. And they both say, you know, no, no, or shut up or whatever it is. <laughs> um, so it was, it was fun to be in that room as, uh, as everybody's there. Plus that was my first real foray. Um, I think when I had recorded the, the other justice league episode I had done, I hadn't been with much of the cast. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so to be there, and I think uh, I think Su- maybe Susan Eisberg. I can't remember, but but a number of them right, were in the room at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and that was a, a ton of fun. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, Justice League is one of those Justice League uh, and Batman the animated series, and it's probably because I'm not as connected to those, obviously, as I was to Batman Beyond. I still watch those on a regular basis. I watched an episode of Justice League, on, uh, I think it was Unlimited, it, like two days ago. So those are still hugely important in my life. And that, that style of animation, that type of storytelling, all that stuff, is you, you get me every time with that. Have you seen the new Justice League versus the Fatal Five movie that just came out? Mm, not yet. I hear everybody tells me it's kind of like a throwback to a Justice League episode. It very much is, it's yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm yeah, gonna... no, the last one I watched was Reign of Superman. Okay, yeah. Nice. So I'm going to get off of Justice League because we're we're talked about it plenty. <laughs> but uh, the, the, re- <laughs> the Return of the Joker movie uh, had got two different versions, that uncut and censored. I'm sure you're very aware. <laughs> um, and I noticed, like, when I watch it, I can tell... Yeah, we did a whole video on a side-by-side comparison of the changes between the two versions and uh, so I, I can I'm pretty aware at this point, having to edit it and everything um, of, you know, which lines are changed and what just little subtleties are different between the versions. When when you had to go, I assume you had to go back in to re-record lines, you know, but a lot of them are very mild, uh, you know, like there's a line where you say, um, oh, since his girlfriend bought it, too. And you had to dub it over with something like since you saw Harley fall into the pit, like just things like that, that barely feel like they need to be censored. What was that experience like having to come back and do that sort of stuff? You know, that's, it's kind of par for the course when you're doing any animated series. You know that, you know, one of two things is going to happen. Either something is going to be uh, grabbed by, by standards and practices and, okay, this has to change. Or frankly, you just recorded it differently than it was animated i mean there's okay. especially in an action show there's many times where you know i will you're having a scene with with you know kevin and i will have a scene where we're quietly talking and then when it comes back from anim- from the animation house we're now across the bat cave and there's <laughs> sure. screen, and it's like oh we got to re-record that because now we're yelling yeah um so you usually just get a packet of of you know we called it the oops and uggs packet and then there would be um the kind of re-recording stuff and uh, that's par for the course. So we were, what we were more bummed about was was that 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 incredible sequence um, where the where where uh, young Robin actually kills the Joker, shoots him mm-hmm. in the chest. That was so such a poignant scene that we the kind of the gas instead we were like, oh okay, I get why they're doing it, but it it takes away a bit of uh, of of where we went. So I'm so glad they released it both versions. But there were things where they almost had us re-record uh, stuff where you go, wait a minute, what? Like one of the things <laughs> I know that uh, a couple of the, the people were telling us was they almost wouldn't allow at one point, there's a, a great scene between um, Terry and uh, Bruce in the limousine where he says, you know, you told me about everybody else, but you never told me about him. He's the worst. Uh, you know, are you sure he died? What happened to him? And, and Bruce says, shut up and drive. Right. And the, and for the weeks they were arguing, you can't have him say shut up. He can't say shut up. He can't say and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> so you never wow. you never know the stuff that's gonna come back where this thing gets through and that thing doesn't. And you kinda you shake your head a bit and go, Wait a second, he just threw two guys off a building and that's okay, but he yeah. can't say shut up. Um <laughs> Well at least they put seatbelts on of, you. <laughs> Exit. Well, no seatbelts. You got it. Got to have the seatbelts. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's strange. Yeah, you never, you never know, and you kind of shake your head. But that eventually made it in because that, to me, is actually one of my favorite scenes of the entire piece. Is is that limousine yeah. where it's just the two of us talking? With any time, it was just. I mean, God, I love being Batman. I love yeah. when you know recording the oofs and uggs and all that stuff. But some of my favorite acting scenes were were Terry and Bruce, just the quiet scenes together in either the Batcave or in the house where he's really teaching him not only what it's like to be Batman, but what it's like to have your alter ego. I mean, all that stuff was what that was some of my favorite stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a hashtag here at the Watchtower database, which is uh, hashtag keep epilogue a secret. 
uh, which refers to the JLU episode epilogue. And uh, I want to keep my end of the hashtag bargain and warn any of our listeners who have not seen epilogue to skip this part and refer to the time code I put in the description. But uh, for those who have seen it, uh, we had a couple of questions related to that episode. And uh, this is, of course, as you know, the episode where it's revealed Terry is technically Bruce Wayne's biological son, Gasp. And, what? Uh, yeah. He, what? <laughs> no. I was hoping you would have. I that. haven't seen it yet. <laughs> you just you told me the watch was the only thing you hadn't seen, so I had. <laughs> <laughs> just filled that for me. Thanks a lot. Okay, great. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm watching Empire Strikes Back for my first time next week, so don't give anything away. I actually oh, bring no. that up in the Keep Up Vlog a Secret video that people shouldn't <laughs> talk about that. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, so. Was that whole thing something you were told from the beginning, or was it just as much a surprise to you? I mean, five seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was just a, it was just as much a surprise to me. It was funny. I was actually again, this was this is pre email, pre texting, right. pre anything. So I get a call. Um, <laughs> it was literally just Will Bruce Tim. I went, hey Bruce, how you doing? He went, fine. Sending sending you a script for Justice League Unlimited. If anybody hears about this before I'm ready, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> literally and i went oh okay and he still didn't tell me what it was like all right i'll see you next week when we record it's like okay and i was like what the hell is he talking and then i got the script and it was like oh you're kidding me because it was just so cool by the way for all you the, the listeners that have not skipped ahead um rosebud was a sled bruce willis has been dead the entire time <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you can't do this so Dar- yeah darth is Luke's father and and terry is, is bruce's kid well those um, are the four most important uh cinematic spoilers so <laughs> they yeah. truly are <laughs> the top four but everything they the, you know the way they they tied it around and and uh you know amanda waller and her voice is just so perfect for that character and her explaining about Project Batman Beyond, it was just, I still get chills every yeah. time that episode's on. Uh, totally cool. And cutting from the, the, the kind of noir style, the black and white to the mm-hmm. color, and Carrie being a little older in the opening where she just turns around and calls it Batman. Oh, so cool. So I'm, the thing people forget is I am first and foremost a fan, always will be, <laughs> love this stuff, always have. So any chance I could be involved in any way, I'm over the moon. But as a fan, I still gush over all this stuff. It's such great storytelling uh, that it was, man, I read that. I must have read that thing five times that first night. Yeah. It was so cool. Well, it's kind of perfect that you weren't actually like in the know about it until you got the script, because then the, otherwise you might have had a maybe different performance throughout the series or something. Yeah, it's possible. It's certainly possible that it could have could have could have colored some form of my performance. Who knows? But I'm yeah. so glad I didn't know. <laughs> I learned what everybody else did, and uh, it really, uh, yeah, really kind of added to the the flavor. And just, yeah. yeah, I keep going to that. Keep coming back to the Justice League again. They're all a little bit older. Uh, he quit. It's just oh, it was so cool. And then you know the scene with with uh, Batman and Ace, where he just sits there with her. And just holding her hand until she dies and then walks out of the, the, the garden with her is just oh gorgeous. So uh, yeah, one of my one of my favorites of all time. Awesome. That's that's really interesting to me that you didn't know about that, because going back and watching uh, Batman Beyond after the fact, like there's definitely hints dropped in. And there was there was also talks about there was a, supposed to be a, a second follow up movie where they were going to reveal it then. And Catwoman was going to be involved with the uh, the, the uh, cloning process. So I, I'm surprised that nothing was said to you during the uh, the run of the original show. No, they might have done that on purpose again. You just like, <laughs> no, we don't want them to know. We want to make sure that it just kind of stays the way it is. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I'm not sure. I loved how they, you know, they ended up uh, bringing back Phantasm and, uh, all, you know, all of it just worked. The so Grey Ghost. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So great. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the whole thing was great. I, my favorite. One of my, absolutely one of my favorites of all time. Oh, for sure. So you got to uh, you got to bring the character back uh, for a short amount of time in uh, in the 2014 Batman 75th anniversary short. Was it cool to kind of kind of put the bat suit back on and go at it? It was. It was cool because uh, not only did I get to do that, but it, 
Kevin and I over, unfortunately this time over phone patch got to record together again, <laughs> uh, nice. which was, uh, you know, he was in New York at the time, but it was, uh, yeah. I mean, anytime you can kind of go back and do that. And, and that was, uh, I think it was, it was a Darwin cook short and uh, he's passed now. And mm -hmm. that was, uh, yeah. uh, you know, a huge honor to be, to be able to, to, to do some of his work and, uh, yeah, just to be able to put on and then to sit there and, you know, I'm again, fan first. So when you sit there and you pause and you're looking at all the different Batman that they brought up and you're like, Oh, there's nipple suit, Batman. There's Michael <laughs> <Keaton> <laughs> Batman. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you can, cause I'm, again, I'm that guy. So I, you know, I'm sitting there looking at all the different Batman that they brought in. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. And it was, it's one of those things where it's, it, it was just enough of recording to wet my whistle to want to more. So we're still, we're still kind of going, man, I hope, hope we get a chance to do some more stuff. So for a little while, there was a rumor that if Justice League Unlimited had kept going for another season, uh, you might have headlined as Batman with the JLU of the future. Would you, um, or were you ever approached about that storyline or would have liked to see that uh, future Justice League have their own season like that? Uh, yeah, Future Justice League would be a really <laughs> cool thing to do. Uh, and of course, I would love to do that. They, you know, it's one of those things where they, they're throwing around so many storylines so many different times that there's, it's impossible to keep the actors kind of abreast of what's going on. Uh, because, you know, there's men, these, these awesome men and women sitting in a room throwing storylines out, writing stuff up on chalkboards. And it, so it's kind of, I'm sure everything's been discussed at some point. Uh, and it's, and they just can't keep us informed of everything. We, we usually find out what's happening, you know, uh, uh, if, if we're lucky, maybe a couple weeks before where they'll call and say, Hey, we're doing this new film. Uh, but, uh, usually we find out last. Gotcha. <laughs> well, you're talking about, um, wanting to do, to return to the character, uh, in a bigger capacity than just a, you know, minute and a half short, like you most recently did, um, after the success of the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse movie, there's been a handful of rumors about an animated Batman Beyond feature um, that keep kind of popping up and then getting shut down immediately and then popping back up and shutting down immediately. Would, would you like to return to the character in something like that? Or would you rather see the, the torch passed, I guess, so to speak? No, hell no. I don't want to see the torch passed. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, but again, I, I, I can look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what, buddy? You're the best Terry McGinnis there's ever been. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because actually, I'm the only Terry McGinnis exactly. there's ever been. That's why I can say that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, no, of course, eventually, somebody else is going to play the part. I, 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 I no illusions about what, that whatsoever. Um, and, you know, the, as, as in Batman, you know, the mantle will eventually pass. Uh -huh. Um, I would hope I get a chance to at least do it one or, you know, a couple more times if there's a, a film or a short or something that, uh, I would get the chance to bring it on. But, you know, I've been, uh, you know, uh, Bumblebee and Bumblebee has been other people. I've, you know, Terry McGinnis is the only one so far that has only been me. So, you know, somebody of course will do it next. I hope I get a chance to do it again, though, because yeah. it was some of the most fun I've ever had. It's also because it was my first animated series, very near and dear to my heart. Um, so I, there will, you know, when I do finally hear they're doing a Batman Beyond movie and I'm not Terry, um, of course, I will be very happy that the character lives on. But yeah, there'll be a, a part of me that's like, damn it, that's, you know, and every actor is like that. They'll be lying to you if they said they weren't. Well, then when um, you find but, you out know, anything at all about this potentially happening, just let us know and we will start the hashtag to make sure that you <laughs> get the part. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you'll get the job. That's very <laughs> sweet. Very sweet. No, I mean, again, there's some some actors out there that, uh, you know, would, would nail this thing. It's, it, and, and you look at, you know, everybody kind of going, well, what can they do with a character like Spider-Man that we haven't seen yet? And then you put it into the Spider-Verse and you go, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> it, but I mean, it's so good that if they do something like that with Batman Beyond and I'm not involved, how can you hate that? You'd sit back and you go, my God, look at, look what they did. Uh, so it's, uh, I mean, I, I, again, the, 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 the actor part of you goes, oh, I, I wish that was me. Yeah. But the artist part of you goes, man, that's a beautiful thing they did. And I'm just happy to be able to sit back and watch it.
Yes, no doubt. Well, are you uh, familiar that Batman Beyond has made it into the mainstream DC comic books too? And have you read any of these new storylines? Are you keeping up with it? Uh, I'm not keeping up with the storylines, unfortunately. I do know of the existence of the comic books. I've read several of them. I'm friends with several of the people that were involved with the um, with the creation and, and the comic books, like Adam Beechin, like uh, Kyle Higgins. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, you know, these, these are my buddies. So they kind of keep me up to date on what's going on. And then of course, um, when everyone's hitting me up on social media a few years back, like they killed Terry, Terry's dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a big thing. We're like, oh man, so they killed Terry. And then there was such a backlash that they had to bring him back. Um, yeah. which was a, uh, <laughs> kind of a great feeling. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it, it, th- that's how I think, you know, your character has, has mattered in the universe when it starts to hit other kind of medium. I mean, when you get the, you know, the comic books and the graphic novels and stuff like that, that's when you kind of go, Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, you're part, you're part of the, of the ether now. And I love that. So, yeah. And I signed a bunch of them. That's the thing that's so great is everybody will come in with these, like, you know, they're perfectly bound comic books. Like, can you sign this, please sign it right here. Sign it in this color. Like, heck yeah. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, love that stuff. But I'm I like comic books. My my passion was never comic books. It was uh, uh, fantasy novels and animation. So uh, I'm I'm trying to get more into comic books, but the uh, animation always pulls me in. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, so we did we did briefly bring up the new uh, the new Justice League vs. Fatal Five movie, and uh, a lot of that movie deals with um, a newer Green Lantern that deals with anxiety problems. And re- recently, maybe a couple years ago, I read about uh, your switch to voice acting from screen acting due to uh, problems with anxiety yourself. And I was wondering, uh, you know, if you're if you're comfortable with discussing it, do you have any advice for fans who might be dealing with similar issues? Because I know I've talked to a bunch of people in our fan base who deal with that kind of stuff. And I know a couple of us on the call right now actually deal with it as well. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts if you're uh, comfortable sharing. Sure. No, I'd be happy to. No. Well, the the first thing, the biggest. Well, very OK, very quickly, because I know we don't have a ton of time and I don't want to drag it out for you guys. But <laughs> sure. I was my life was going and I'm sure people will understand this story uh, uh, and and relate to it. My life was going one direction very fast. It was beautiful. Everything was amazing. And then in a millisecond, your entire life changes when you're hit with your first anxiety attack. And when you don't know what it is, which I didn't at the time, you get into your head about it. And then you start what I call the spiral and you're just down, 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 down. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, and it's self perpetuating. You know, you don't know what's happening to you. You're convinced you're dying. Uh, it's, and when you finally get to the, the proper medical care and they say you have anxiety, you're going, no, 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 no. I have cancer. I'm, I had a stroke. I had a heart attack. And uh, finally they go, no. And you got, you get medicated, you do what you have to do. But in the last, I'd say, I don't know, four or five years, I found something that helped me more than any pill I've taken more than anything I've ever done. And that's talking about it. If you're holding it in and you're not letting people know what's going on uh, inside of you, it gets worse and you deal with it alone and you deal with it in your head and it's horrifying. Whereas if you go, Hey, can you give me a minute? I'm having an anxiety attack. I know myself it'll be over in about 30 seconds, but just give me a second. It goes away. It's one of the most empowering things in the world is talking about it. Because first of all, it makes you feel better about yourself. And second of all, just like you said with us on the call, invariably, if you're in a room of five people and you say, I deal with anxiety, two of them go, I do too. And Mm -hmm. instantly you're not alone. So that the first advice I give people is that talk about it. Do not be, there's no stigma about it. Do not be ashamed of it. Just, Hey man, I've got a slight glitch in my flight or fight response. Give me a second. I need to take some breaths. I'll be fine. That's the first thing. The second thing is realizing that you're going to have an anxiety attack. There's things you're going to do in your life that are going to make you panic. It's part of your life. It's part of your brain. It's just the way it's going to work. You have to get to the point where you go, oh, I'm going to have an anxiety attack, but I'm doing that thing anyway. I'm not going to let what's going on in my mind take whatever experience this is from me, whether it's flying, whether it's get heights, whether it's going on vacation, whatever, 
will normally freak you out, make sure that you go do it anyway. And every yeah. day you start to do that, yeah. the anxiety starts to recede a little bit because you're going, yeah, you know what? I'm going to freak out. I'm going anyway. I'm, it's just what I'm going to do. And you sit there and you, I wouldn't have been able to go, you know, 15 years ago, I couldn't have done any of these conventions. I couldn't have sat and talked in front of crowds. Uh, and now I look forward to it because that, at least that aspect of my anxiety, and I'm, I'm still before a panel going to be nervous. I'm still going to have an anxiety attack, but 30 seconds in, I'm going to be fine. And it's because I went there and I did it anyway. So that's the other piece of advice I have is do one thing every day you were too scared to do yesterday. And you'll see how amazed it did. All of a sudden your life slowly starts to shift. It's incredible talking about it and doing it anyway. Those are, uh, that's, that, those are the t-shirts for the day. Beautiful. Thank you very much. I love it. <laughs> I, I know we have, we have one final question for you before you, you hop off. And it's perhaps our most important question. And this is, okay. This is a, a, a kill F Mary kind of situation. Uh, we have okay. Dana, Max or Melanie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to say Mary Dana. You don't have to say that. <laughs> but you, <laughs> you do. Keep out the lock of secrets. Take, take <laughs> yourself out of the suit for a second. <laughs> you can't, you know, I, you got, got to say I love them all. Is that horrible? No, I, you know, I think Melanie, Melanie is, is Terry Selena Kyle. Yeah. So that's, yes. you know, you, you get, you, you, you know, there's crazy coming with that package, but you also know it's going to be a super exciting life. Um, but I would have to say, Mary Dana. Yeah, I guess, I guess so, <laughs> Melanie. I guess so, yeah. Melanie. Yeah. And, uh, and, and sleep with Max, I guess. It's too tough. I want to marry Max and, yeah. and Dana and, and sleep with Melanie and not kill anybody. He's, 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 Batman, yeah, he's Batman, yeah. Exactly. Batman, doesn't Batman doesn't kill. kill. Batman doesn't kill. <laughs> you heard it We're throwing Zack right Snyder out of the window. <laughs> Batman doesn't kill. Thank you. Yeah, that's, you heard that's it from the way. Not Superman, except when he, he just has a harem. <laughs> right. Yes, <laughs> Actually, oh, that's so funny. I actually, but for the record, I asked, I asked Bruce Tim uh, if he slept with Melanie, and Bruce wouldn't answer me. So I said, did did Terry and Melanie hook up that night? He just smiled and walked away. I was like, damn it! So, uh, and we yeah, never I'm saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank thank you so much awesome. for joining us will uh it was really really great to talk to you and to basically to talk to terry mcginnis for a couple for an hour or so here so we really appreciate it that's awesome thank you guys so much for having me on and i uh, I'm, I'm glad that it worked out because i know we wanted to do this in yeah. seattle so i'm happy yeah. that, that we had a chance to do it for sure thanks so much hopefully we can have you back once uh you do the animated batman beyond movie that's coming yeah. out like, <laughs> two three yes, yes. three four that's years from deal. now <laughs> that's the nice. deal if there's an animated batman beyond movie coming out then uh, i'll come back we'll we'll have another chat perfect even if incredible. there's not one yeah even if there's <laughs> all right fair <laughs> enough <laughs> well cool <laughs> well thanks again thank you guys i appreciate it have a good night and uh, we'll talk soon all right thanks all right, you, too. you too all right bye-bye <laughs> bye so now that will is gone we need to start a hashtag petition for the sequel to Date with the President's Daughter. <laughs> right. that, okay. that was a lot of fun. That was a great interview. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. I'm, I'm glad he was uh, he was willing to be uh, so open. Willing. He's yeah. always will willing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>